Even if you win a gunfight, you should be prepared for being injured yourself. Hey everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection. This is John Correa, who you are used to seeing every day, and I am Stephanie Widener. She's the boss around these parts. Today's video comes to us from Peru. This is not a paid endorsement, but I am a brand ambassador for Lone Star Armory because they are the highest quality AR-15 carbines on the market. They are incredibly robust and will absolutely do what you need it to do on the worst day of your life. You have a home defense rifle for a reason and it needs to be quality for a reason. Check out Lone Star Armory. Kind of hard to see what's going on here at first. So our intended victim is sitting right here uh, just having lunch. He is a businessman with maybe some ties to the mafia. Our attackers are include this guy right here as well as the motorcycle that is coming from the very top of the screen. Now, again, I went and looked at the news stories. This guy is no Boy Scout. He's got some ties to the mafia. Uh, he's noted as a businessman in town. Very rare for Peruvians to get carry permits. So not saying there's a whole lot of good people in this one. But as the guys in the motos are going to come up here, the dude who is standing at the window is going to decide to draw a gun and point it at our intended victim while another guy comes and grabs his backpack. Now they were targeting that backpack 100% while our dude and the first attacker have a gunfight together. Attacker ended up dead. Uh, victim ended up injured. So let's watch it one more time here. Okay, here we have the guys pulling up and clearly they planned this ahead of time. He's coming up to hold the man, the businessman at gunpoint while his partner grabs the bag and runs off and they have a gunfight there. Uh, then we have our defender and our attacker laying there while the other two run off. Defender ended up injured on this one, transferred to the hospital. Attacker ended up taking the patio temperature challenge and that's where it ends. All right, I'm just gonna take a second here because Stephanie, I'm super excited to have you come on the main channel. You guys don't know her very well here on the big channel. You see her over on Active Self Protection Extra a little bit more commonly and in the monthly online seminars. This lady is an absolute wealth of knowledge, national level trainer. So we're gonna let her give us her thoughts in lessons. I think our first lesson here, we talk about it all the time on the channel, is that good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people should carry defensive tools on them, such as firearms, because gosh, man, bad things happen to good people for a time. Although I think with the stories here on this one, step, I'm not sure there's not a bigger lesson here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, regardless of the fact that nobody here is good guys, we can still learn from the principles of what happened here. And the principles that we can learn as good, sane, sober, moral self-defenders is you need to follow the rules of stupid, which are uh, from John Farnham, which are don't go to stupid places with stupid people to do stupid things at stupid times. We've amended it and added a little bit there. And if you, if, if you kind of avoid those things, you really avoid a lot of the problems that come with him. This isn't this guy's first gunfight. He was clearly ready for it, and it's because he lives a lifestyle where this sort of thing happens. If you can live a lifestyle where this sort of thing is not constantly imminent, you can avoid a lot of problems. Yeah, if you go look at the news stories that we've linked in the description, this guy has ties to the mafia. Uh, it's not his first gunfight. He'd had some other problems before, which, I mean, again, he might just be a crap magnet, but it sure sounds to me like this guy is involved with bad people doing bad things, and so it causes him problems. For sure, and he, because of that, he was ready for this, which was a good thing to learn from this. He was ready for this attack when it happened. Yeah, so you can see the bad guy always gets to set the time and the place of the attack. So he's just sitting and having his lunch, whatever, until our dude comes off the window and points a gun at him. Now, I would say for most people here, your best bet is probably purpose compliance unless you really imminently feel like they're actually gonna shoot you yeah and in this case he may very strongly have had that feeling because of his lifestyle but yeah it would be really hard to get a gun out effectively in this situation right now and I think that's our biggest lesson here in terms of actually getting the gun out you're gonna see it takes him quite some time to get his gun in the fight and maybe the better answer here purposeful compliance okay you want my backpack dude take it whatever we'll, we'll live to fight another day or whatever the case may be because now you see him stepping up here and starting to try to draw his gun now, I would say this, we talk about this on the channel all the time, that having a two second or a 1.5 second or a one second draw to first shot is where we want, because this is gonna take him freaking forever as he tries to get his gun in the fight. His gun is not out and on target until three seconds. Right, and he got shot in the process. Right, and, and so again, bad guy gets a first shot off because he sees him trying to fish around for his gun, recognizes it for what it is, and gets the first shot on him. Now, 
Good emotional fitness staying in the fight. Good emotional fitness getting after it. I will say a couple things here. You notice he puts that gun way out in front of him, aims very low on this guy and gets a gut shot. We'd much rather have a high center chest or a head shot here. Uh, and again though, having a faster, more reliable draw to first shot may have gotten him out of this one without a serious injury. Right, and this was enough to win the day today. He was able to end this attack, although he ended up in serious condition in the hospital because of it. Yeah, and, and I think, again, a couple other things out of this one. Number one, you shouldn't expect to get out of a defensive encounter unscathed. So that's a really good reminder. Have your first aid equipment on your person. Have your first aid skills up to par because it's gonna take them quite a while to get you to you know any kind of medical help. So you're gonna be your own first responder in that. One of the reasons we sell the ASP medical kits to which all the proceeds of that go to charity. Right, for sure. I mean, you look around, it, there was a lot of people there a few minutes ago and now it is a ghost town and he's gonna lay there until someone decides to come in and help him. So if you have your, your trauma tools on you and are able to start that, he could have really put himself ahead of the game there. I really think you're right. And I also think that using those when you are injured and badly injured requires a great deal of emotional fitness. Mm -hmm. So how do we build emotional fitness? We do hard things. We, we carry on when things are tough and that builds our emotional fitness. So I think the big lessons here, follow the rules of stupid and stay out of lifestyles that will get you into these kinds of gunfights. Make sure that you have your tools on your person and you're ready to go. Be first because not being first is a great way to get hurt. Have your first aid equipment and skills on you. Thanks so much, Stephanie, for all the help. That was great. Thank you.